Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Joffy's VIP room, man. I am your host, your boy Joffy in the building. Long time. For a long time, I haven't done this in a good minute, but I always appreciate all my viewers. And I appreciate this panel that I have right here. It's such a very talented panel right here. We got late. I'm going to go ahead and do, I got to do ladies first. The gentleman in me, in me, I have to do it first. So, <laughs> Nicole, how you doing, man? I am well, thank you. And thank you for um, asking me to be a part of this. Hey, greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. We got Ben, the damn fool up in the building, man. What's up, brother? What's going down, brother? Always good to see you, man. Uh, it's been a while. Yep, Thank you for allowing me back. Or invite me to, to, the, to your new platform. Actually, this is my first time, so appreciate you. This, this is Yeah, this is your first time in the VIP room, man. This is it, man. I appreciate it, brother. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah. it. And, man, and, of course, last but not least, we got my brother Reddick, another brother from another mother, always in the VIP room, man. Appreciate you for coming through, brother. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I snuck in through the back door, but those don't tell nobody. I appreciate you letting me in. <laughs> I ain't going to tell nobody, man. Once once this VIP room gets to a certain status, we gonna, this this going to be the place. This going to be a safe place. There ain't going to be no P. Diddy nonsense going letting, on. You can't be letting people know that the security is bad at the VIP room. <laughs> You know, hey, you know. Everybody gonna be all up here all willy nilly, man. Let's go. You're gonna have to you got gonna have to give them a bracelet or, or put a mark on their hand like they did at Astroworld back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You Remember if everybody when we found out they were using a highlight marker, everybody was getting into the damn Astroworld. You remember that? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Once our sales are down. <laughs> <laughs> Once I'm able to, to afford some good security, we, 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 but yeah, our security is top notch. You know, hey, that, that's what we got. I've been, I've been a VIP. Are you day day? Yeah. We ain't going to have no day day, no Craig, no none of that. I've been here. <laughs> but, but once the VIP gets a certain celebrity status, this will be a safe place. No, no P. Diddy, you know, uh, nonsense ooh, going on ooh, around here. We, no we, Diddy. No, 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 take that. This <laughs> Man, this is gonna be a different VIP room, man. man this, that's you know, a, I ain't got that's no nothing. That's, a, that's the, the the hot subject right there, bro. Whoa. Woo -woo. We 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 will tackle that uh later on, probably if if we remember. Mm. But once when, we start talking, more facts man, come out. Man, yes, we need more facts first. But well, that's what we need, man. <laughs> But yeah, man. But uh, before we get into this, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to check out the Just Acting Up show, where we have, uh, I guess, and also my other my homeboys, my other homegirl. We have Mike, Chris, and Tashay that joins us, and we have guests that comes on the, the Just Acting Up show as well. We have Reddick on there. We have Ben on there. Nicole, you're gonna be up next real soon on, on the Just Acting Up show. So okay, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, we, we just dropped a new episode, so y'all keep on checking out and like, share, comment, subscribe, not just to this show, but to Just Acting Up show, and we got more in store for y'all. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the topic, man. So, the topic of today in the VIP room is Shannon Sharp. We're not finna bash the brother, we're not finna talk bad about the brother. We are going to talk about the guests that he has on the show and the topics and the comedians and everybody else. We're starting to look at it as like, okay, so... Cat Williams came on there, and he said what he had to say. As but we also had Monique come on there. She said what she had to say, and then ever since then, or probably way before then, because you know people just wasn't recording these comedians going at each other's necks or throats or whatever. Even actors have been going at other actors as well in in our community. We ain't gonna say names. <laughs> we gonna we gonna let y'all do that on the social media thing, but. We kind of look at it as somewhat of a crab in a bucket mentality, holding each other back or just bashing each other from work. But in a way, it kind of does, you know, get the thing started, get get everybody to tune in to who these people are. So let's go ahead and talk about this real quick, man. So like I said, Club Shay Shay, everybody watch Club Shay Shay, right? Or every now and then or tune in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, see the, and see the clips. We see the clips from, from here and there. So we already know what Cat Williams said. Uh, Let's talk about that real quick before we get into the other news. So who wants to start off first with what Cat Williams said about how from everything from the darkness is going to come to the light and people are about to start getting exposed. He said it's up for all of them. Well, he said he, he said did he like the party? You got to <laughs> tell him no. 
And it's looking like, uh, I don't know what day they the people going to see this. But whenever you see this, Diddy might have thrown his last party. Cause they all up in this in the spot in his house. They had all the residents. They had the jets. They are ain't no more cheesecakes. Ain't no more none of that. So <laughs> Man, this is... I'm not even gonna ask. Well, <laughs> it's going down for everybody. That's what they say. In 2024, everybody's being um, exposed. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what this year means uh, mm -hmm. for them to decide in 2024, even though you've always heard little chirpings of different things from even if you go back to the details, me being a comic and about certain things that was heard in the um cat williams interview mm -hmm. that like certain things in that interview i've heard before right um and i've heard different things about cat i you know like uh you know just being in the, in the game so um it's i guess you say when it comes to all of entertainment that's what mm -hmm. it's looking like because when it comes to just in general when it comes to celebrities from the all the way from political figures mm -hmm. to uh, musicians to uh, comedians to whatever it may be, people are being um, outed for wrongdoings. So I guess you could yeah. say, or bad work, and mm -hmm. um, you know. So that's what's going on. But I mean, it's 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 always it's been going on for a while, and yeah. um, I don't know. You you better really have a clean closet. Clean, yeah. con a clean conscience only comes from a clean closet. Right. Right. Absolutely. Uh, go ahead, Rick. No, go ahead. You go. Uh, um, For me, as far as um, Kat, uh, like Ben said, a lot of stuff, you know, you've heard rumors and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And perhaps this is the year because of different things that I research and read on and stuff. To me, it's almost like a cycle. Mm. You know, Things happen and eventually it's going to burst. It's going to happen, you know. And so I'm not saying P. Diddy did it because I don't know. Right. Or anybody else or Oprah or none of these people did it. But um, what I do know is that when you have that kind of power and stuff and you do things, you get away with it. You get away with it. Yeah. You get away with it. You know, just like when we kids and then finally your mom or dad would be like, you know what? Bring that ass around here because you've been needing <laughs> one of these. You know, one of those things. And so when they had that kind of power, because I try to really look at what's right there before me, right? Right. So, uh, what's the girl that first put out the uh, statement? Casey. Uh, Cass Cassie. Yeah. Cassie. Cassie. Yeah, yeah, like she has no power, right? right? So what has been going on or who prompted her, Who you know what I'm saying, to do this? Because she left all this money in P. Diddy for a physical trainer, right? Mm. You know, so was it just a money grab? Or was something else, you know, I'm not saying she didn't get paid, like, hey, you need to go and tell. Because maybe something that we don't know about, that mm -hmm. she was like, let me go ahead and tell and clear my name. Because right. she knew what was, you know what I'm saying, going on. Because it was a while that she had been with him that I forgot she even existed. I was like, oh, they still together? Well, <laughs> so. well, see, uh, uh, like, if you don't have a, if you don't have a announcement, of course, you do have celebrities that announce that people be dead and they don't be dead. But if you are still alive, what I've realized is in entertainment, because like even when it comes to comedy, people to like if you stay in the game long enough, you, you can see comics now who are successful. Mm -hmm. And if you look at them 20 years ago, they were at a certain level. <laughs> and uh, you'd be like, damn, that they, they was here. And then you looking at them at 2024, you think about it, that was 2000. So it's mm -hmm. a process that can go into into things and stuff like that. But what I realized, and I was driving early today, and I think I heard something on a on the uh, internet. You know, you be hearing things about uh, the the debate, the men and women debate about who's the prize and different things like that. What I realized is, and and I think it applies to entertainment because I heard you say that like, Cassie don't have power. Mm -hmm. uh, the power. Or the prize. When people say that I'm a prize, prize is in power. 
If you have no power, you can't be a prize. So that's off the rip. Like if you have, if you look at, you know, men in, in certain positions and women who try to position themselves to be with them because they are powerful men. So that's why they can look at themselves as a prize. If you're a man who works or does it, mm. if you're a woman who works and has a certain type of degree, you have a certain power uh, that you can command, like uh, whether it be, you you know, a, uh, a boss lady, you know what I mean yeah. when I say power right. is the prize. And what also, what I realize if to have that power, you have to, in the entertainment business, what it seems like, you have to be alive. All yeah. you got to do is stay alive, stay around, because you see so many. <laughs> if, Tupac is always a hot topic. Yes. But he, it, 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 because he isn't here, and he and there's so many things around him, and you can move and different things. But anybody can get out there and tell a Tupac story. If it sounds good enough, you'll have enough people that rock with it, and you have enough people that try to defute it from somewhere else. Thing. But as long as you stay alive in this entertainment business, and you just see how things have changed. Mm -hmm. Times are changing. Just like it's changing in front of us, yeah. it's changing in front of these celebrities. They have to deal with uh, certain things not being... They Just like we we dealing with certain stuff being exposed in the area mm -hmm. and, and in this era and stuff like that, they came from that same era where you can... They never thought that you'd have a Freak Nick documentary. Yeah. Even though it was weak. You know, from <laughs> what I hear, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't but, seen it. Yeah, but from what I, you know what I mean? Like, even mm -hmm. for it to be, who in 94 would think that there would be a documentary about what we're doing at this freak Nick? We busting it open, we da da da, you know, whatever it may be, whether you're the guy or the woman, doing whatever it is at that moment. So mm -hmm. now you have this new age coming in where you do have people that was in, in positions of power, but you don't have statute of limitations when it comes to certain things. You have public opinion, uh, what is acceptable and now and and today in twenty years and thirty years ago is not acceptable today. Right. So, um, the power when you talk about like Cassie having power, she survived. Like when you say surviving R. Kelly, and they gonna might have a surviving daddy's house and Diddy house and all this kind of stuff. Surviving bad boy. Think about all the people who, and I'm not accusing or anything like that. I don't know. But if you know, they talk about him skimming off money, and you think about all the artists that have passed away and who may have seen the things that might have been right there. She one of the few people who was around when he was like popping, popping, who get to see things. So um, when it comes to like nowadays, uh, you, like I said earlier, you're going to have a clear conscience if you got a clean closet. closet. The right. cleaner your closet, the cleaner your conscience. Because I was thinking about it earlier, like, you start getting rid of these people who've been doing shady stuff when it comes to comedy, the music, to movies, this and that. Like, do, <laughs> do, 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 we, do we usher in a new wave of people and then you stop denying certain people certain mm -hmm. opportunities because they didn't fit certain stuff? Like, does it change? Or we just expose them because that's what's been happening. You expose a certain yeah. people, but it's still having changed the climate of work. You right. Still, you know, so sorry for the long one. No, I you, would say when it comes to that. No, nah, you good. You good because it, it all ties back into one. Like all of us talk because we, we see what's going on. We all in the entertainment business from comedy to acting to producing, writing, to directing. And, you know, we all see some things that we like was questionable and it makes us ask, ask ourselves like, Man, are we doing right? And we, you know, we do our. I'm pretty, everybody here all the time. Yeah, we always ask ourselves, like, you know, we go through what we go through, but right. we also do our best not to hurt anybody intentionally or screw anybody over or whatever. Right. Or we, we try to have we have our integrity about us and try to do what's right to each other and treat people how we want to be treated. But it's just some things where you like mm, mm, question some of these people that we that have paved the way for us, and that's where it becomes questionable. Like, like how Cat was saying, like he he names the people in in that uh, interview to where like uh, you know he named Cedric Entertainer, Steve Harvey, people that we all laughed and enjoyed and everything else. But then it's like your integrity question becomes questionable once you hear some of the bad things about him. 
Same thing with you know Monique when she I says mean, something about people. Yeah, Monique about the people that we all you know watch and buy and everything, and they like, dang, you did that to these people. Like, think you need to well, go ahead, ready. The, the the funny thing about that is, you look at where we first started watching these people years ago when we were young, and the biggest difference between then and now, mm. social media, yeah. all those things yeah. that we didn't hear about, all those little yeah. clips and things that now we are privy to because yeah. back then. We were just trying to get a beeper. You know, yeah, remember yeah. having to have quarters yeah, and a yeah. payphone and it, yeah. The stupidest thing. Beat me, I'm going to call you back. But, you know, that's the biggest difference. I think now that we have social media, everybody's got receipts. Mm. Everybody's not, you know, when you can show proof, you know, and then when it comes to the, the, to the other part that you originally talked about, the crab and the barrel syndrome, well, you know, another quote, the same thing I said earlier about cats saying, you know, it's going to be up for a bunch of y'all. Well, some people refuse to grow in their crap. Hell, Ice T and LL Cool J can go from doing music to doing what they're doing now and keep a check coming good. For a com for comedy, it's, it's, it's a tough game. Yeah. You know, people, you, you got to sell some some tickets. You know, it's, it's it's not the same as here's the budget. We're gonna give you this to show up, and we're gonna do these episodes. No, everybody's trying to eat, and well, some see, people I aren't. That... Go ahead. Oh, man. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. Let you finish. No, I let you finish. Uh, like from... yeah. But you know, it's it, there's space for everybody. But I think right now mm -hmm. a lot of people are, are feeling pressure because they 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 you know. You can't be a one trick pony. And I think sometimes people get better because they're not where they used to be. And so what ends up happening is like the grumpy old man next door that don't want you to touch his yard or nothing. And back 20, 30 years ago, he was the nicest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, when people's situations change and they can see the, 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 the what was it? The, the, come to a close or the closing of the, what is it that I'm trying to say? Nicole, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, the curtain, like you can hear a, you <laughs> the curtain call. Call. It's almost like when you the almost... curtain call. The curtain. The yeah. curtain. When the curtain. When the curtain starts. Oh, oh, to close or, or, or even just moving. It's like, a, it's a wrap. You, you, or even when you like for us, I think what he's saying is like because you may work definitely entertainment. You plan to work up until you die. Like you, I don't know what retirement is when it comes to entertainment. Like mm -hmm. you may move from movies to like maybe doing like a you know, like a sitcom, you know, like yeah. something that's not as, you know, so you work it till you die. But I think uh, what you're getting at is like when you at one phase and then you move into like that next phase and then you're looking into, because yeah. we are realistically, we, we understand that we all have an expiration date. And then right. you start looking into where you, you know, you, that next phase from, because you may not ever get to where you are now or where you were, were at. And it's kind of, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I had, I'm just filling in and, uh, cause I know what you were saying, but I'm glad I had let, I, I, I stepped back and let you finish it because you were saying pretty much kind of like where I, I was, like I was thinking, like when it yeah. comes to, uh, the entertainment and, and, and yeah. that, that mindset for one, uh, it is a, they kind of trick you. I, I always remember like people would tell you, like, man, when it was when it was Eddie, it was Eddie. And then when it was Martin, it was Martin. And then when it was this guy, it was Ke then you but then you start re remembering you got so many comedians, like I was talking yeah. about earlier, who like a guy like Dion Cole, a guy like uh who I can remember watching him get three or three or four minutes on comic view mm -hmm. weekly and then you may not see him anywhere else because he actually worked in the circuit as a stand-up comedian now you see him everywhere mm -hmm. you see him standing you see him in you know you can't Old even the older without him standing in front of you and saying you know so uh you see so it's work like I say if you if you stay alive you, <laughs> <laughs> of course, you and then you got to do the work. <laughs> That's the main thing. You got to say that. 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know I'm like you have no power being because you're alive and you're breathing. But what I mean, like a little, little bit about cast about no power, like from the start, right? Supposedly just from what we understand, you know, when they oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I'm saying? He beat up and this kind oh, of I mean, thing. When, when I say that, head. I mean, she gave her power. She so, gave her so, power just being one of the people <laughs> outside, because outside of, like you say, outside of that one song, and her being associated with him, yeah, you don't know her. Right, so so but that's what I mean about power. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now she may be getting her power back because now right. she got some right. some cash older and yeah. now she's telling her story. But that's just and what I, I didn't mean like she was just like where, at mm -hmm. Yeah, um, at times it changed to where, like, you know how many people probably tried to come and say something about Diddy? In two thousand and one or two thousand and two, it was two thousand three. It was just and they may not have gotten like they didn't get killed or get right. snatched up or nothing. They just get shut down from people be like, yeah, go different time. Like yeah. he just he just put out we ain't go and Man. girl, we ain't trying to talk about yeah, we, we up there partying this time. <laughs> like, like, go on, go on, different go on. time, yeah. different time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So fast forward to now to where, um. Almost like when we were talking when when uh Reddick was talking about the celebrity and the and the and the and the and the, and the, the uh social media era to mm -hmm. where I can remember the time as well, like when you didn't really know your celebrity. You you guessed right. what they did right. when they was at home or you wondered what they did. And when you open yourself up to that, now you have you got people that want to know what, what you are. Are you a freak? Are you a, a creep? Are you a, you know what I'm saying? So Reality show 101. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have a person, like you say, Cassie come in and you say, well, this person that y'all been glorifying and y'all love and everything like that, he had y'all talking about voter die and, and everything like that, all this kind of stuff. This is what he into. Yeah. And this is some scary stuff too, because like we, we saw it happen with Will Cosby. <laughs> we saw that. Um, now we're seeing what's going on with Diddy and others. And I, we did meet me and Reddit did meet Cassie on the set of um, what's that? The Hip Hop Family Christmas. Took a picture with a sweet, sweet person. Sweet How long person. ago was that? Yeah, that was like uh, two years, two, three years ago. Two years ago. Two years. Yeah. So she was out. Of, she was out of his custody then, huh? Probably. Yeah. Probably about that time. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Did but she smile? Like, yeah, she yeah. Was, yeah, she was smiling. Oh yeah, yeah. She was okay. okay. She was loose. She's free. Yeah. <laughs> and then she yeah, smiled. She, yeah. 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 Free. So, um, you know, to kind of piggyback on about, you know, with social media and how it's changed things, it brought to mind um, that once a comedian told me that they feel like they've been doing comedy a long time mm -hmm. and a lot of people that they have helped or, you know, put on or worked with and stuff are like, and they're still like here, you know, kind right. of thing. And so, um, they're like, I feel like I'm losing it, like I'm no longer relevant. No. And so I had to like, you know, think about it before I said anything. And I was like, well, what are you doing? You know, you have to keep up. You have to, but it's like, they don't want to get a new computer. They don't want to update their phone. They don't want to. And I was like, okay, if this isn't working, you know, this is what you like to do, that's fine, but learn to do it differently. Maybe you need to be a motivational speaker and put your comedy in your motivational speaking, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Maybe you need to get you a pocket. Maybe you, you know, whatever it is, you need to stop being afraid of technology and get with it because as long as you, you know, just got a Facebook page and you put and catch me on my show, it's not going to work. A lot of people now, you know, as far as comedians, y'all will do a skit or something right before you'll have a song playing. You know, something, but if you just post, come to my comedy show with no music behind or anything. Mm -hmm. it, and so, yeah, you will feel like that. So it's like, I think <clears throat> even with myself, you mm -hmm. know, I have to keep reinventing myself and do things and, you know, to try to stay relevant. And what else can I do? So because we grew up for, for the most part from my parents, you get a job, you keep it, you stay there, you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You retire and stuff. And now it's like, you no, know, you have to diversify your portfolio. And we really mm -hmm. learned that in 2020 when it was a shutdown. You know, yeah. what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? And so comedians had to be like, what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have a stage no more, but I got to do this. You know, and actors and stuff, you know, and they had to switch from somebody doing their reels to now they got to set up their own reels. How do I do that? What does that look like? What is it? You know, and it forced us to kind of have to juggle a couple of things at one time and be multifaceted. And you know what I love? What what you about to say, Brent? Man, what you got? What you got? 
Oh well, I, well, I'll let, I don't know because it was going to be on the topic of uh, when it comes to the entertainment. Mm. As a comedian, I know like even before uh, like Cat Williams came out, mm -hmm. I know comics who don't like each other. Mm -hmm. I know uh, it's just like any job. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you may not like work with. I don't have any comic who I can personally say that I won't work with personally. You know what I'm saying? I have comics who over the years that I that me and them like when I'm gonna do it, yeah I do it because I'm going out there doing what I got to do and paying. I'm not finna be overly confrontational or anything. Mm -hmm. I ain't finna be hiding or anything like that, but. Me and this person don't rock. I mean, it's still a professional setting. It's just like going to work. You know what yeah. I'm saying? This ain't this ain't uh the streets, it's the we working, you know what I'm saying? So just like any any job, you're gonna have people who don't like each other or don't like to work with each other and stuff like that. Yeah. Um when it comes to comedy, well, not even comedy, I wish that with black, I hate to sound like that. Well, no, I don't want to no, hate go, sound go like it. You hear it. But, like, I wish that... I wish that negativity didn't sell as much within the black yeah. community. Because if it did, then... Uh, like, everybody... If, if you notice... Like, uh, with Cat Williams, in all honesty, mm -hmm. um, before Cat Williams got on that... Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Sharp interview. He was considered to, I don't have plenty conversations mm -hmm. uh, like before I was doing stand up comedy mm -hmm. where people talk about who their favorite comics is and who this, that, and the third. And he was one of the people, voices that you would hear ring out from people. Yeah. He has a, 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 a loyal fan base when it comes to comedy and everything like that. You're going to have that. So when it comes to like blacks, I don't know. We I don't know the equivalent to what's the white equivalent, and I'm just using white or Indian or Spanish equivalent to a Shea Sharp where they have whatever genre that can come on or the Breakfast Club or mm -hmm. wherever these play where they can go out and air their quote unquote grievances. So mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? What and and black Rap is about who's great. You, everything going on with Kendrick and Drake and yeah. and, and and J. J. Cole. Cole now. Yeah. Now that, that, two weeks that. ago, people was going to J. Cole and Drake concerts, and we had just seen <laughs> we were with Drake. Uh, Kendrick had won the Grammy with his cousin, and we had them song, and he had did the Super Bowl last year, and mm -hmm. now all of a sudden everybody's in tune to what is Drake and J. Cole going to do. To respond to what that black man said to this other dude, what he said on the track, and then it's just like this thing, which I love competition, but right. like it's competition every time I step on the stage. Like if I'm booked on the show, mm -hmm. I plan on being better than everybody on there. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like you don't don't turn crabs in the bucket. Whenever you're doing a job, you're supposed to want to be the best at doing it. Yeah. And that just brings good morale. If right. any other job, it will bring good morale. You know what I'm saying? You you doing it? You pick up, say, hey, man, you killed this. So let me come in and bring that. But it's different when it comes to entertainment because it goes back to what Redrick said. People feel like, oh, if you if you getting it, I can't get something. Mm. No, yeah. it's not. You know what I'm saying? It's the equivalent. It's not the case. The closest equivalent. Would be Howard Stern, I think. Yeah, uh, I'll say that. But yeah. that's, mm. that's the only one I can think of um, off the top of my head. Uh, but this society, but he, but he was more so. But he was more so like shock, like crazy type. I mean, yeah, but people mm. that go on there to use it for beef. I guess white folks did but, like politicians. But it, it started back in. I'm gonna tell you where it really got popular. Uh, the first show was. Um, Ooh, 90s, but real, real, it was the MTV reality show. Oh, yeah, real, um, 
Uh, real world? Yeah, real world. Yeah. It's real world. Give me on there. Real- yeah, yeah, yeah. I reality, world. TV, reality TV yeah, is yeah. popular because of the drama that comes from it. Mm-hmm. People wouldn't watch if it was just really yeah. just cameras following people around. You know, they they they, they keep them they keep them juiced up on liquor, just like Shay Shay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they they keep no seriously. Yeah, all these yeah. that have, that have been on else. time you get there. Here's a drink. There here's you go. a drink. Here's a drink. Because they know in a matter of time, all we got to do is record it. All we got to do is just put some people together and long enough, mm-hmm. like my dad said, seldom business make for long friendships. When people get around too long, they get too comfortable. And then here comes the drama. Yeah. And so, they per- oh, go ahead. Sorry. go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, you're exactly right about, you know, they give them liquor like, oh, what was this show? Bad Girls. Mm-hmm. It's like what you don't see is how much liquor they give them. And then it's like they have a lot of time. On the acting side, a downtime. Nothing's going on. Right. So what do they do? One of the producers, they down there talking about y'all. And they said you were. And then they said, you know, why are you down here talking about me? And it's like, you know, that kind of stuff. So drama sales because, right, you have to have an antagonist, a protagonist mm-hmm. in any story and stuff like that. So that's basically just what it is. It's drama. It is. For whatever reason, mm-hmm. in the Black community, it's something different. If you watch a Lifetime movie or a Hallmark movie, the drama that they have is different than the ones on BET. Yeah, you know, what I'm I, think it's a, I think it's like I don't know what type of mentality it is that I, I don't want to pinpoint it to something, but there has to be because I think they the all the different type of syndromes and different things diagnoses they try to bring. I think it all be tying in together to to a certain extent because like yeah. um like I, I it goes to like an appreciation like if you go to going and even if you look at. A Tubi movie. Now we've seen mm-hmm. different things. Now mm-hmm. when you hear a Tubi movie, is already a, a mindset that comes with it. Uh, a person. Now it's certain things that I've seen in Tubi movies, and I'm thinking like, you have to either do that on purpose, or you just don't give a shit about <laughs> certain stuff. But then, <laughs> yeah, uh, you see other stuff that maybe. Uh, <laughs> Uh oh, I can't hear us cutting out. Maybe missing certain. Oh, you're breaking up a bit. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Am I cutting? Am I I all right now? Say say something. Yeah. How's that now? You may have to go out and come in. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, Hello? Um, log, Log out and come back in. Um, uh, back in. Yeah. Oh shit. But um, uh, while we wait on Ben, there's something I want to touch on, Nicole. What you said earlier about how um, what was it about uh? Oh, that what that's what it was. With um, Godfrey, he says something about like how Cosby, the business. That's what it was. He was saying you got to remind yourself the business. Part. Even though that's coming from Bill Cosby, we, what happened happened. But he did give some great advice to, to you know Godfrey that was recently on Shannon Sharp, saying that it is a business, and that's what people not understanding in our, mm-hmm. our in our you know independent world, and with um, the other side of it, the professional world too, because they were saying that phase on love. You know, he, you know, was coming out, you know, throwing shots at everybody, talking about Ice Cube didn't pay me this amount. But, you know, at the same time, you got Big Worm. And you got these other things that came from not just Big Worm, because we always going to follow what we saw you from first. So it's like, you really, like, in some type of way, it's like, you know, he got what he can get out of, you know, his his uh, career. But it's like, sometimes we look at others, like, not... Are like you saying not doing your your part as being lazy and not you know looking at what's the new curve of like not getting on social media or not um, doing other things to put yourself out there like other people are doing to stay relevant and so you have all this bitterness that that is like in your veins or whatever and now you're throwing shots to this person this person this person and you're not at a certain level so it's the business side of it that you need to learn like me and Reddick talk about that all the time like like okay. When some people come up to us and say, hey, man, I'm this talented, that talented, everything. 
but you don't get your head shots. Or like the demo just, reel. Just, you can't do anything without that. Yeah. And then some people can the demo reel. Yeah, the demo reel or your voiceover work, like and ready like the okay, working resume. Yeah, your resume. Like, okay, you need this type of microphone, this, that, and that. Oh man, I ain't got no money. Sacrifice comes with anything, especially in this business. If you do not understand, this is a master class for everybody, five viewers. Just like you know that right now. But you gotta make a say. Like, there are times where like I was like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna pay this, pay that. But somehow, some way, God provides, or you know, whatever. God mm -hmm. provides, and I was able to get the certain you things. Just, just to like you make time for, yeah, yeah. We make time. We we make time for everything we want to do. Yeah, we make a way of making things happen for things we want to make happen. Yeah, I made my first demo reel using Instagram, and mm -hmm. just saving it to my phone, just to have something. Mm -hmm. You work with what you got first. I mm -hmm. tell people all the time, I don't care what it is. You want to, you, you, whatever you want to do, start with what you got. You don't have a camera, use your phone. You don't and have a mic. Good. My phone come in 8K and it's a droid, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got come an 8K now. camera, for real. White balance and everything, you know? Come on, come on now. Hey, like that. no, no, she's telling the truth. She's yeah. a beast with that camera. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's, 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 it's no excuse. And, you know, you know the difference in somebody who's seriously trying to make it happen and somebody who's just trying to say, I aspire to do something, but I'm not really there yet. Well, everybody had aspirations. And then eventually, what did we do? We jumped off the porch and we decided to put our foot. We dove in. Mm -hmm. We didn't We didn't put our toe in the water. We dove in. Yeah. You know, it's not one of those situations where I can't get yesterday back, just like I can't get that last breath. Yeah. That I just <laughs> took, you know, you got to, you got to, got to really go after it i think like what uh joffy said like you got to make that sacrifice and yeah there are some sacrifices like for me when i think about the sacrifices is i'm supposed to go to such and such family birthday party event or whatever it is but mama i gotta do this and i'm supposed to make 500 dollars. i love them i'm mm -hmm. sending them something but i gotta you know do this yeah and so it was said to me that uh lunel you know like uh, she mm -hmm. was giving these classes like tips and stuff like that and they said you know the way she is she just sat down and she told everybody fuck your mama fuck your daddy fuck your friends fuck, your, fuck all them and people <laughs> like she said I, she and you know how she is she said yeah. no he said you're gonna miss some, some christmases you're gonna miss some family reunion yeah. some of them things it's the same people doing the same thing having the same meal in the same language call and stuff like this but when you got to do what you got to do you do that because they supported you and this is why you're doing that and right. then when the, the benefits and all the reaping come in then they oh i see because sometimes it's difficult because a lot of people live a nine to five you know what i'm saying yeah. and, and they just you know, just have no idea understanding. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't never catch up with you so busy. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. Because yeah. even though we're doing this, we're working. Yeah. We're working. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop. So when it comes to things, sometimes it's a sacrifice. Now, the other thing I think is a self-investment, right? Like yes. your phone or your camera or, you know, you're doing a show or something and you need to, <laughs> you know, buy some tickets so these people can go, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's a self-investment and I think some people don't have the mentality that, okay, I need to upgrade my phone. I need to upgrade mm -hmm. my computer, get this software. I need to get mm -hmm. an editor. I need to get a camera person to come in at least once a month when mm -hmm. I'm at such and such and record me because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Go ahead and spend $150. If you're going to buy some weed, you can get yeah. somebody oh, to get that real quick. You can get your little cousin to edit that nine days. They 12, 13, 15. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's like, and that's what, it, and that's also what I wanted to talk about too. Like with all that, like the sacrifice and everything, then get to where you need to get to, and then the crab and bucket mentality. Where I was talking about how people from it can be people from yesteryear, these people that are like hot right now, or whatever. Some of them be, come out and say, "Oh man, that I could have got this and that, but this other person was holding me back from this." Who was it? I think it was uh, that rap from the band. It was kind of funny. I can't hate but laugh at it. Dylan. Uh, Dylan, yeah. They talking about Dave Chappelle. Be, talking about because of this man oh. this, that skit Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. You messed up my whole career. And then this one lady on this other uh, podcast was saying, Dylan, you ain't never been hot or whatever. So you wasn't hot. When, you wasn't hot when you were supposed to be hot. <laughs> it's Dylan, 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 Dylan. Dylan. I spit hot fire. But and then what comes to Come it, it's like podium breast milk. 
<laughs> and you think, I think, that, I, think that, that, I think that happens a lot yeah. in entertainment, definitely with comedy, like this yeah. this sense of entitlement. I, I made a post a few months ago, like mm-hmm. or maybe a month ago, where um and I and I have to I pick and choose when I'm gonna say certain stuff. Right. Because um I don't want a person that could some stuff, you know, you be thinking it right then and there after you see some shit yeah. or whatever. And then, you know, somebody be checking your stuff and see if you post it like, damn, you was at you was at my event or whatever. Or whatever. But with comedy, I said, man, sometimes with comedy I be looking at cats on stage and I be thinking, like, man, my nigga, do you hear do you hear yourself? Like mm. do you hear yourself though? You seeing are you are you are you seeing what's going on? Are you feeling it? Like what do you like? I ain't never been in that situation, so I wouldn't understand. So I I don't understand. Like that's like walking and shit, birds shitting on your head, and you just keep <laughs> moving. Like you know what I'm saying? People throwing shit at you, and you just keep moving. Like you don't see none of this. You don't feel this. You don't understand. It don't make you want to do anything different. Mm-hmm, like right. I I don't I don't get it, and. When it comes to like entertainment people, I think that I don't know if it's a a false thing because everyone used to get told like they were whether it be a you was a singer you might have sound better than what you you mm. actually sound and everything like that. But I don't know they reward some people so much for shit and bad behavior and bad stuff today to where um, I don't even know the motivation anymore. Like when it comes to comedy. I've never wanted to, I've always wanted to just go up there and work on my craft and be funny. Right. So um, it, I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone out there who's actually TikToking and documenting him. He's going to be, him or her, they're going to say, I'm going to be trash on 100 stages and 100 <laughs> nights. Like that's the type of, <laughs> that's the type of yeah. shit that we in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and people will reward you for this type of behavior. It's it's a it's crazy what the consumer acts to consumer nowadays. Yeah, what well, they buy into and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and I don't know if that makes people stoop, and that allow and when people are stooping, that allows that that makes people that makes the crabs grab even more when you mm-hmm. stoop. When it comes to your integrity or your whatever yeah. it may be, you know what I'm saying. So I think I think they're more gullible. You know, I think I think mm-hmm. there are, there are a lot of people. We've heard just like you're saying, and we've heard songs that you know we've we've seen and we've heard things that we like. How's that it? How's that just being in heavy rotation, like it is? Mm-hmm. You know. And then you, you find know, yourself and, singing and, it at the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's some, there's some songs, some females singing. I'm singing the beat, you know, song, and I'm just like, I'm nowhere like this. This is horrible. You can't do people I like, was, you know. I was a Missy Elliott fan, but I hated that. You flip it, they not flip it, they reverse it. You know, <laughs> but it, after you hear, I said, don't flip it, you find yet. If you hear that a hundred times, <laughs> you gonna be it's in, like the, it's your flipping it, it, just playing yet. You gonna say it's it? Like it? The, it's, it's like the. Uh, that Liberty commercial. Liberty, yeah. Liberty, you know, Liberty. <laughs> there's nothing, I mean, they have pianos falling on emus and, and people like everything <laughs> but the product. But like, what, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah. It's like, but it's, it's. I mean, every sporting event, every prime time, uh, they stay on. The mm-hmm. so programming. You know, and it's like, they, they it's stay, they're the, heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the programming. So what do y'all think brought it, what is it? They brought it to, I don't want to say the dumbing down, you know what I'm saying? But like, mm-hmm. it's almost like you say, like with, with, with film and comedy, it's almost like, almost like gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? At mm-hmm. first it was consciousness and everybody, you know, let's be one. And, and now mm-hmm. it's like, you know, this side of that side. If you rock with them, the gang rock with us, you know, th- those kind of things. Yeah. And, yeah. and everything ties together is weird because mm-hmm. like when you say, like, with, even if you compare like gangster rap, or like rap in general, when it originally started, it was just a thing, people rapping and doing things. And mm-hmm. even when it came to like uh, being a 
and I'm not from New York, but from what you hear, being a freestyler in New York, you just had to be a a, a pretty spiffy and, and pretty cold with your wordplay and pretty pretty cold and keep yeah. the beat rocking and everything like that. It wasn't about, and I, that's another thing that I was not to get off topic, but I hate that comes to with black that it's like a necessity that we live our art. Mm-hmm. It's almost like it's almost um because even when it comes to like gangster rap music, well, mm-hmm. let me go back to my original topic mm-hmm. to, to being the gangster rap music. Uh, oh, before it was gangster rap, it was that, and then mm-hmm. you move it to like the gangster mm-hmm. rap. I guess you could say with the NWA and everything like that. You could go and they say that Dr. Dre was a dancer and, and he went this, that, and the third. What's the problem? It's entertainment. No, yeah. it's not real and everything like that. But then you move, and as you move forward, you keep going, you keep going. Uh, you get penalized for not being a a person who have done these things, even though uh Tony Montana has never existed. They don't have a person who you can say that Tony Montana was actually modeled after. You can say he's modeled after this guy, this mm-hmm. guy, this guy, like a bunch of different people. But it's no people. It's no person. And Al Pacino didn't live off of Tony Montana for the rest of his life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, but with black, it's like not only do media do it, but we have a habit of not seeing it's just even with even as simple as saying that I can't see Jalil outside of Urkel. Yeah. See he was the voice. What do you, call it? you know what I mean? Like that mindset, like that mindset of saying you got to be the if you're a gangster rapper, you got to sell the drug. Oh, you wasn't really out there selling. It. Well, I may be telling my story of my homeboy that was doing this that, and third or what. Uh, but I, but it goes into that that double edged sort of. It's almost like the companies will say, "No, I don't want you to. I want you to talk about it, but I need you to glorify it. I don't want you to talk about." The struggle that came with it or lose because you could talk about the dope game and how good it came up and mm-hmm. how and how bad and at the end of the day if it sound good it's gonna sell yeah well you have to look at some of the yeah i think i forget which uh bone thug and harmony uh member it was but he spoke about the meeting he went to and the people that were there were basically invested in prisons yeah. yeah, and when you really think about it, there is a classroom to prison pipeline. Why do you think those songs do stay on as much as they do? It's they 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 they're they're in the business of making money. The more people that get mm-hmm. you know get get that uh, get that Hellcat, do those donuts, smoke that weed, drink that liquor, <laughs> get yeah. back behind the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> fuck, fuck that cop. You know, get the switch. You know, I mean, when you really think about all the things that are being flooded, and I have a 12 year old, so it's like sometimes I just turn up the radio, like, no, this is what we're listening to, right? This is what we think, right? Let me see mm-hmm. what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I'm having to help him understand what's really being pushed. I'm like, these aren't things you would, you know, why you like it? Because the opposite of anything you would do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, when you first get around kids that could, you know, love to cuss and you're like whoa we can do that we're at the park yeah let's do it <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> so, it's like yeah, you, you love it because it's something that you know you shouldn't be doing and the same thing with music mm-hmm. junior high school and high school kids are the ones that are calling and requesting these songs to be played mm-hmm. that's what that's yeah. why they're playing it they don't want to push you know, but when it it's comes the same as what people, we was doing you yeah. know so when it comes to the when it comes to the, the to when it comes to the people who are really wanting these songs to be made and and pushing for them to be promoted yeah i, d- I believe there is some truth to that when it comes to mm-hmm. you, you you can google that information to people who are invested in certain private prisons private mm-hmm. prisons not a federal not state but private prisons ran through a federal or, or ran through a state mm-hmm. it's a business yeah mm-hmm. like I mean, you said, if, we, if we look what, at the what, number if we look really at corrected Ain't nobody if getting look, corrected in prison. Mm. No, not at all. Mm. If we will, if we look at even just the artists mm. and how artists, it's almost just the same thing when it comes to sports. If you start young, 
you have like a your 20s and if you're lucky if you can get to your third like when they say in sports you can only be in the nba two or three years it ain't talking about the superstars who last 15 and 60 the average two to five years the same thing when it comes to a musician or you may be a hot comedian that can blow up and they get on something like man where that person was at a, a hot song and then you know two to five years you blow up get a hot album hot single hot album or whatever it may be mm -hmm. if you look at the artist, whatever you was doing in your 20s or whatever, now you move towards your 30s or whatever. Then you say, well, now I'm trying to find something for the for the a party. You might have a the rapper who was kind of hard. He, he trying to do something yeah. kind of party type oh, stuff. And then you yeah, move into your 40s and stuff like that. Now you podcast, you ain't making music no more. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, like when, when you go, when you go back to the original, like I said, that's the same thing we used to do. Like, we were, I was listening. I mean, you may have some of your uncles and your dad. Like, you had some older heads who was listening to the 50 cents. Like, I can remember mm -hmm. when 50 came and in and, and the yeah. early 2000s when I was coming up. You had adults that was listening to it. But we're listening to it because the adults are listening to it. Mm -hmm. And kids going to buy or get their parents to buy. But that's who... The the art the the companies and different things that's who they really want to get because you get those buyers early you can mm -hmm. have them for longer but even us we mature now we back to our we back to the music that our parents was listening to mm -hmm. because we can't listen to that certain that shit anymore Man. if it was just if it was supposed to be like that if it was supposed to be like that the even. Like I can listen to music now that I used to listen to back in the day, and I can still listen to some of it. Some mm -hmm. of that shit I got to turn off. I'd be like, like, what was I on back then? Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, it was like, time. Was oh yeah. yeah, man, man. <laughs> I had no business listening as a kid, no more than now. Hey. We want some food. We we up in the like little bad little kid up in the air. Hey. But I think what made the difference with that, were you finished, Ben? I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what made the difference was even though I heard that music, I heard it outside the house or I had to sneak and he listened to, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Whereas now when I look at social media, I see mothers and fathers doing dances with songs with, you know, talking about yeah. it's open. It's, and it's just like, no. That's, that's the, the simple thing. Like even not, not even just the simple, like, not even playing like you can't even record the fact that you would even be willing to record yourself mm -hmm. with your kid in the background <laughs> with that going on like people don't have no shame no more that's so a crap in the like, bucket so that's that's a crap in the bucket mentality right there too not yeah not a not um gravitating towards other genres and doing these things that you like you know your kid ain't got no business doing that like you holding that kid back from like really you know, getting to that next level or like just listen to that music as as well. You and, already said your child up for failure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you're, you're you're robbing them of their of their of their 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 their, their, their kid state. You know, yeah, you're flooding yeah. them with the wrong thing. You, their yeah. innocence is you're yeah. robbing it from them. Yeah. I agree. I've even seen uh, a couple of them and they have them now where they have pole dancing uh, classes. Mommy and me. But, Kid, oh, girls and boys and that. I'm like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Why? Not they making little, not they making little magic, not they making little magic mics in the shell. Man, come on, man. So <laughs> it's like, where, where does it? Where I, saw does it I, remember, I couldn't even listen to candy liquor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Marvin, I can still listen to candy liquor. Like, go get your room, go your room. And I'm like, why? They just let me be. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Was not letting that happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. Yeah, man. But, it but is yeah, like you say, you wouldn't have but that in got, the house. But they got that old, old, old record of that woman that was talking all that sex. I forget the name, but she was. Oh, I know she's talking about. She was back yeah. in the thirties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you talking about? Yeah. Her, album, her, her single cover was a Auntie Mama and Lou. Yeah, like, this is gonna lick that. Like, oh. like, hold on now, wait a minute, man. She got a, she got a, so maybe that's what it boils down to a sense of privacy. 
But since a, that too, sense of privacy. That there's no sense of privacy. Uh, yeah. Everything's just open. Yeah. With, because, with celebrities and with people, with you yeah. know, with just anything. You just get on your phone. Hey, look what I had for lunch today. Yeah. Ooh, my belly button hurt. You know. Yeah. Wow. You're right. Sense of privacy and the way how we go about um talking to these individuals. Because even though you know, there's some like what Monique said about when she came out, she spoke to Tyler Perry and opened all them. Probably, and now she's on the platform where she can air all that out. It's like, mm, like man, then you y'all talked about this in private, but it gets to that point, and we just get so frustrated with ourselves. And so uh, now you have to go back. The person that did wrong, and like, okay, let me clean this up or something. Some drama sales. Drama yeah. sales. I think somebody said that earlier. Drama yeah. sales. Yeah, because it is it, it it is ridiculous that it gets to that point where. People that we admire and look up to, because I say it all day. Like, even though like I don't watch everything that Tyler Perry does, even though I don't approve of some of the things that he put out there, or whatever. Like, just some things I don't, something I do. Like, okay, but I still admire the hustle of where he's at now. But saying something like, "Bro, that's that's kind of kind of shady," you know, that's messed up right there. Oprah, I'm like, come on, Oprah, you you can do better than that. Yeah, and we just get. And that's where we look at that crab and bucket mentality, like you holding that person back from getting this, or well, also, also, uh, and I, don't, I, ain't, I don't, ah, kind of hard to put this out there without, like, take your time, take your time. Well, no, I, I mean, I know the words. I yeah. just don't want to <laughs> let the Lord there. use your baby. The, there there we go. No, let you the know, Lord you use. Want, you don't want them all. You know, you just don't want to be put out. Like, I'm not a person. Who, I don't. I don't. I've never been in like comedy drama and different things like that or whatever. Or just drama and period. But what I will say is what I'll say. Like using Monique, because we were talking about Monique. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard about the. I forgot what it was. That the Shannon Sharp interview when she he said that he heard. The things that Tyler had said or something is one. I think that's the interview where she I said think, he I heard. Think, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When Tyler was saying that he admitted to certain things or whatever, that's yeah. just fucked up. That's messed yeah. up. Like if you up. put that, you know, like you were saying, like to purposely bash the person and do certain things or whatever like that. Right. But also, at the same time, I'm a stand up comedian and I'm moving towards certain. Different mm -hmm. genre, like when it comes to acting and yeah. and, and different things, produ production and different things like that. Yeah. As a strictly as a comic, I've heard from at different comedy clubs. I used to come in, like now I go to places and I may, and I talk to the staff still mm -hmm. about different things or whatever. But you never know the type of question that you would, you know, may come in your mind. But I remember mm -hmm. I question I used to ask like who was their favorite or who they hate working with and stuff like that. Right. This was before like all the stuff that came out. Mm -hmm. Staff was I, at a few comedy clubs I went to. People said they hated Monique. Mm. I heard that too. Yeah. Just from that. working with like working with her. That's as a comedian and a headliner. That could be, you know, your demands or your how your attitude, right. you know, I it's a lot to can go into that. Uh, and the only reason why I say that to say is going back to my where I may have put that on the shirt. Your the cleanest con the cleanest clauses have the cleanest conscience because mm -hmm. when it comes, it, it's a domino effect when you don't get certain things. Like for me, I've had personal, I had personal things that have in my life that I've deal with, you know, we all deal with in, right. in life. And you say, and you, and I've sometimes I like relationships that I've needed to like, uh, fix and different things like that. And right. I've said, man, I wonder if I've thought to myself, like, I wonder if I'm not where I want to be because I, I haven't fixed this. Mm, I think about that too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it comes to like the, you know, when people say like, you reap what you sow and different things like that. Certain things that you don't get that you may have, like, and and I don't want to be like the blame game because I don't know or whatever, but you can get you can get jammed up. Like I can get jammed up in if trying to get a uh trying to move into acting and different things like jerked around or whatever. But if I was a jerk and an asshole to people 
on in the comedy spaces and then I move in, who's to say that why why would I need to be blessed in this next space or this next era? Or mm. why wouldn't I get what I, I didn't already uh sold? Mm. Are you saying yeah. karma? Karma. Karma can't come back and get you, yeah. True. You know and what I mean? Maybe, and then maybe that's, that's that lesson that you learn. You know what I'm saying? When you're a certain everybody, way. That's everybody. That goes back to on you. like with the cat. Cat, you're a successful guy. When I was talking about Cat being a, a person that everyone loves and everything like that, you mm -hmm. went and then now you go on to the this thing and it's like this big thing. That's why it's such a big deal. It wouldn't be a big deal if he wasn't already considered mm -hmm. this type of guy to people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you know, like Cat, it's people that talk all type of shit about Kevin. I never really hear him respond to anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, different mentalities. Everybody got their own mentality mm -hmm. on how they handle and do do different things or whatever. It's just but at the end of the day, it's like I don't you know, know it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a tactic that I've I've watched a few people use when they're attacked. Sometimes when you respond, you give it validity simply because it showed that it was something worthy of you to even, you know, talk about. Right, and you know his, his attitude's kind of been that of a duck. You know, like why would I talk about that? That person okay. doesn't. Do, I mean, you know yeah. how that is. He's like, I don't see them where I go. I, yeah, I, I don't. I, what are they doing now? You know, right. he'll, yeah. he'll he'll get a flat back if he has to, but for the most part, he's not going to rush and hurry <laughs> up and respond back to somebody who he'd be on. He'd be defending himself all day every day. Yeah, very true. I you know. Agree. You know, sometimes you just do better to just not even respond. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that is part of the crabs in the bucket is that when you, a lot of, not all the time, but for the most mm. time when you look at it in most situations, um, you know, I hear a lot of things, you know, because I'm in the background. I see things through a lens and there will be yeah. people, uh, one comedian once told me, you know, when I see a flyer with comedians on there, I look at it and I be looking at how they pick them and not me. And I, and in my mind, I'm like, but you don't know why they pick them. It may have nothing to do with comedy at all, but the business, maybe it's your style. Maybe mm -hmm. it's your, they promised somebody early. You don't know. You just keep doing you and just- And, I'm un the and, and I want to dip in and mm -hmm. say, just to put a record, in all honesty, I've never thought that, but I've heard the yeah. same type of stuff mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, I've never asked anybody for any uh, for any type of like outside of like, hey man, I'm finna pull up. You got some time to get on stage, and I ain't expecting no money or no. You know what I'm saying? If I'm mm -hmm. calling in, like that means I want to get out there and work and and, and get mm -hmm. busy. You know what I'm saying? But I've never asked nobody to be on the show, and no knock to anybody who asked because they say closed mouths don't get fed. I've mm -hmm. always my clo my my clo I never had a closed mouth because my work was my open mouth. Mm. The work that I do is is my open mouth. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I don't necessarily like even when if it got it, even if it gets slow, it ain't never really. It it ain't. It's only as slow as you want it to be. I can I can get out and work and grab some stuff and do this stuff, and or it may be mm. a week or two. You think, oh damn, I don't went from grabbing this 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 that, and then you go a week and then it come back a week later and everything like that. So, um. I've never been a person who worry about other people. I, I don't think about other people, but too many people feel like the reason why they didn't achieve, it, it got to be a reason outside of themselves. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it, and it may be, it may be, and it's maybe way bigger than what, like what, like what Nicole was saying, way bigger than you. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell people, like I, I we was having a conversation on the way to out of town. I was like, it may come down to me and two other guys, and then they may say, "Well, I can't afford this guy for show. Sure. I already know because da 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 da." And it may be based on whatever numbers they have on social media, numbers mm -hmm. that they work, numbers that they worked for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then they turn around and say, okay, I can't get that thing. And I'm going to go get this guy. And then say, well, now if you got five people that's a part of it, 
is a voter, and now you got a, a vote. Now, if you got three out of five people that take it, wait, well, that's that's just simple basis. If you how you how you vote on some shit, yeah. they ain't got nothing to do with you. You know, you could you never know how many times that you come down to the the last straw, and you never know when your opportunity is going to come. It's not about somebody else. Yeah, well, true. Because well, yeah, so so what I was going to say with that is you're absolutely correct. And mm -hmm. the sense was that the people, you know, the people that say that, or this is like this, or, you know, whatever it is that's the negative, everybody holding me down, or there's gatekeepers or whatever. Mm -hmm. When I look at these people, I actually look to see what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I'd be like, uh, is you, you, you hate this production of a show, but you haven't produced not one show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hate this, so you don't want this, but you, I can repeat your jokes. I've been having recordings of comedians since 20, maybe 10. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, I can go back and play your joke. It's it's you. So sometimes, in essence, I think the crabs in the bucket a lot of times can be, cut, can be because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. I worked exactly. in corporate America. Same yeah. thing. The ones who always go back and tell the managers and stuff, yeah. they're they distracting. Because did you yeah. do your spreadsheet? Where's your like, spreadsheet? Like I said, they, that's, my that, that, that is it right there. Yeah. The you people know, who are complaining. Complaining, the people who are complaining don't look in the mirror. You know, mm -hmm. they're mad at they, they, it's more of a it's more of a reflection of where they are in life, and, and now they're taking it out on other people who look like their shine is a little bit brighter than theirs because mm -hmm. they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's had that coworker that did the least. It's like a group project. All they did was put their name on it. Mm -hmm. Somebody else had to pick up the slack, but you still want to get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the most frustrating thing. Like I say, it goes back to like <laughs> that. One, one of the things that makes me go back to is my nigga, are you hearing yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. like it, it like when it comes to comedy, bro, and I love I love comedy. When it like I love stand-up comedy. Let's be honest. Like mm -hmm. I love like on a regular, I watch more probably suspense and 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 dramas or or all or it's all kind of shows and and different things like that or movies and stuff like that to entertain me but when it comes to like i, I say that to say like i don't watch i don't just jump up to watch a comedy movie mm -hmm. or a comedy something but when it comes to stand-up comedy i love stand-up comedy and i and i i feel like as a stand-up comedy you have a duty when you get on stage because people paid their money, yeah. or if they didn't pay their money, they there having a drink or having a, a, a bite to eat, yeah. and they have to hear your shit. I could be listening to music, I could take my food home, I could be doing whatever, and I'm listening to you, something that you feel passionate about. Yeah, You feel passionate about it. So you need to take it very, very seriously. So it always agitates and irks me when I see bullshit on stage. Like when people turn around and and, and I hate when a person tell me, or oh, when I hear some people say, "Man, oh man, I don't even. I'm so fucked up, man. I don't even know what I'm going to do." So you should have said, "I'm not going on," unless you just unless you rich or proud <laughs> when you get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, sit down, get out of there. Don't allow yourself to do this because this is the thing. Like I say, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can go watch, I can go get entertainment any type of way. So when a person mm -hmm. comes and they and they paid their money, even when it comes to a person who paid their money to watch a concert, it goes into that same thing, like mm -hmm. the performance. Mm -hmm. So when Whatever your job requires in your in, in our profession, it put it your profession uh uh calls for you to be able to enunciate, to be able to, to be able to make people laugh, to be able to communicate, mm -hmm. be able to connect, and all this type of thing. So if you ain't doing that, mm -hmm. get the hell up off here and start wasting people's time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear about shit you got going on or this, that, the third, or whatever. Get out of here, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and take pride in what you do. If you don't, if people don't, that creates 
a real crab in the bucket, not taking pride in the things that you do. Because if you do take pride in things you do, you're not worried about outside noise for one. You hold yourself back. You know? Yeah, that's for one. You don't yeah. have that. You don't have that the outside noise if you if you take pride in your in your genre or whatever you your work or whatever you may do. It allows you to actually look in the mirror and and critique and and try to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not, it allows you to that crap in the bucket to say, well, I done done everything that I why y'all why y'all ain't laughing. Or, or this this person sabotaged me before he got on stage. He done did too much time. He done he he said a joke that I he had a joke that just like mine. I can't even use this joke because he, he started talking about this. Man, you know, you know it's funny that you said that. Who was the the king of, of comedy himself, Bernie Mac? That I ain't scared of these mother. You know that that mm -hmm. Def Comedy Jam when he came out, he had he said he had about that little bit of time. He saw the comic before him bomb, and he saw how the crowd was saying, like, was just amped up. Like, they just, like, they not having it. So he took yeah. what was given from given to him, flipped it, went out there, being ready, like you said, and came out there and said, all right, I ain't scared of y'all. Then he told them every time the DJ did that, y'all, we seen the whole story. But that's like, yeah. like saying, coming out, being prepared, yeah. and knocking it, and doing what you need to do to get the job done. Work with what work, work with what you got. Yeah. Work with, Nicole, I'm and Nicole, I may be wrong. You didn't probably you didn't seen me perform plenty of times at plenty of places. And I may be I may have forgot a time, but what that was ever and I'm pretty sure and you have seen, like you say, since 2010 but working with comics. I'm pretty sure you didn't heard like, oh man, the crowd tripping tonight, man. They or they just that in the third, or they <laughs> or whatever it may be, or oh, the crowd is, man. They uh, has there ever been a time whether you uh, and, and whether you've seen a few people go up and afterwards and come that I've ever made a, a a comment about what the crowd is? No, no. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I won't say because you're Ben Jackson, but but no, but even whether you're Ben Jackson or not. But 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 no, it's more so. And I, if you five, say that, 10, I, 20, yeah, 30, 100. I'd be like, "What's wrong with you?" You know what I'm saying? Because the the initial thing is for me. If you own the if you own the lineup or the ticket, oh okay, we good. You know what I'm saying? I can I can I can relax. Just let the camera roll. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's one thing to like I can understand. Everybody can be disappointed. You can come in and go to a place. Everybody has been to a place, and you was expecting. Uh, you expecting the people be having the chills on the ceiling, and then you get in there, and then it's 10, 7, 11, 13, or whatever. But the show must go on. Show got it, yeah, yeah. So, I think also when we're talking about the uh, on like that's on the film, I mean, on the comedy side, but on the film side, the same thing. Uh, uh, Jaffe, you were talking about putting pride and stuff like that. I've been doing this for a while, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, most of the stuff that I have on Tubi is behind the scene, you know, those mm -hmm. kind of things. <clears throat> and the reason why I really started getting into behind the scenes after working with film, mm -hmm. okay, and so like some of the first films I worked with were big budgets, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, I'm already started as a PA or just being nosy yeah. looking at big budgets so then when i start working i'm gonna say it's the chitlin circuit of it you mm -hmm. know i saw all this chaos and just what time we gotta be there and it's 15 phone calls and messages and everybody I thought it was not a <laughs> no, it changed the and i was like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. no call sheet you know you got it you know and so and call two things with me call sheet well three a call sheet not having um a shot list <laughs> and not having water and food on set. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to work 16 hours and they got water and Cheetos. You know, those kind of things and stuff. So it's like, and then they worry about why people talking about they Tubi movie or whatever, or talking about them or not paying people. We all know about that. Because there was some drama for a minute. I got my money from that fool. But anyway, so um, I did. I sent a certified letter to his mama house. I'm not playing. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, I remember. So, so even with that, as many films as this person has made and giving advice and doing all these different yeah. things, to me, that's a crab in the bucket because you're not paying yes. people. You're oh, not yeah. paying people. So sometimes those people who have the power, so say, 
you mm-hmm. know, whatever you want to call it, they have crabs in the bucket too. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let yeah. you come up here, here. Let me pull you. Let me pull you. Oh, I yeah. dropped you, bro. Yeah, um, because you know what? With those, those people, that you talk, those people that you talk about, you may you you could have a handful of those who may uh pretty much what's the word they they pretty much taking advantage. I forgot the word that I want yeah. to use, but you yeah. pretty much taking advantage of of. Uh, the artists and, and different mm-hmm. things like that. You may have a handful of those who may rise for, as far as cream of the crop and it, and it, and it benefits them. Like where, mm-hmm. like, and I'm not saying like he did it or or whatever, but we talked about Diddy. You hear old story about him not paying certain people and different things like Just using that as an example. Yeah. Or a person who sorts the, the people luck. for movies and different things like that mm-hmm. and they don't pay people, whatever. You only may have a handful of those people who can rise up and like, and and scam enough people and get enough mm-hmm. deals to where they become like boss dog or they rich or they they well off or everything like that. Otherwise, mm-hmm. like you say, it's the crab in the bucket because it's a real real crab in the bucket because those people who who not doing what they supposed to do, not paying the type of people, being mm-hmm. janky, knowing it, like you're not finna elevate either. And you're mm-hmm. doing things to not to keep other people down. So you're staying in the bucket. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. every time you got an opportunity to grab somebody else, you pulling them back down too. Yeah. Or like, yeah. Or like how you was, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, man, my bad. But um, I like no, how no, Nicole, it. Or like Nicole was saying, like, um, if you, we, certain artists, when we get to, like me and Red, you get to a certain point, we're like, yeah, if you can't pay us, then hey, if the yo camera work is good and everything, at least give us a demo reel so we can show others right. our work so that way we right. can get the next name. We'll appreciate that. Or yeah. you know, like hey, I can't pay right now, but hey man, you see my work is Deferred. good. Works good. Deferred. Next on the next project, let me try to pay you something. Like how you were saying, man, that's crap and bucket mentality too, because you holding us back, you holding yourself back. Nobody getting nothing done. You keep on promising this and that. It's like this, and it becomes a flat out mess. And we see yeah. whew, that on social media. What they first see coming? <laughs> we see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we we all we've all uh, uh, to piggyback with what you're saying. If you've put in your time into this and you have a demo reel, you have um, everything that you, you're a professional. This is what you do. No, you're not going to go back to doing things simply to try to put something together to put a, a demo reel together. So you're taking low hanging fruit. No, you have a you have a rank. Yeah. <laughs> Family. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and so no, I'm not. I'm not. You know, in a blue moon, if it's like yeah, if it's James and he has a pro, if it's Nick, she has a project. If it's somebody I rock with, and they just simply need me to show up for a little bit, and you know, yeah, I know there's good people. I'm helping them. It's a passion project. Great. Uh, but it's funny how many times people will come back and circle back and ask you to work for free more than once. I have a limit. Yeah. And now it's not even that. It's like it has to be somebody I'm really rocking with, and I'm like, okay, well, they. And, want you, and you know, and you know what, and you know what's crazy, like to kind of piggyback on what you're saying. Red, like when you say like somebody you rocking with, or it may be, let's just say you like when you talk about like you see what they doing, and you you like all right, I'll be a part of it, and and, and you know this rocking and everything like that. You know, sometimes and and for the people who are gonna see this, because you already know, we are us are already already know this what I'm gonna say. Uh, because I'm I'm probably gonna watch the heads more. Well, I'm 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 actually prepping y'all to nod y'all head, but no, but I know that y'all gonna feel what I'm saying, and y'all done felt y'all done been in this situation before. You can pay a person one time, and you never know how many favors you get. Like out, it, like you treat a person now, even when you go past favor or like paying or or like mm-hmm. treat a person right. Like when you say, "Hey man, this ain't what I I don't have this, I don't have that," and you do, um, like when you say the demo reel, that person might have offered you the demo reel, certain other things mm-hmm. that right off the rip, 
Just say mm -hmm. to overcompensate, like say, hey man, this is my idea. This is what I believe. You say, you know what? I just rock with how you rock mm -hmm. because you understand what the situation. You understand life. You trying to do certain things. Your professionalism, how you presented it. Your different like, uh, uh, it's people who have like I worked and that you, you know, and as the guy I'm doing something with, me and him, he he done went from a winery to doing the dispensary and everything like that. Anytime he called me, I'm a, I work with him because of the the free weed. It's all about building good morale. You got to build good morale <laughs> in business. You know what I'm saying? It's building good morale in business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if you it's it, like it's, if you can, a person can. It's just like when a, a, it, you take business out there, you talk about a person that you deal with on a regular basis. You'd be w w more willing to, uh, if somebody asks you for some money, if somebody asks you for $10, mm -hmm. and then they and you give them the $10, and then they turn around, you think it's just $10 and, or thirty fifty dollars $50, and then they turn around to say, hey, I'm going to send you the money back. And then and you didn't hear people say that they're going to send you the money back on this day. And you expect and you expect it, but then that person do. Hey. They it, it ain't about extra. extra. It ain't about extra. It's 75. Yeah, they did what you did. And then because it was worth right. 75 in a moment. Right. And then you, you know, turn around. That, 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 hey, hey, I, you and know, you if, turn every, around I, and you build that morale, and you never like if you treat people right and you yeah. do what you're supposed to do, and 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 you of course within whatever you're doing, like you really Cause it's people that can see you on the outside, mm -hmm. don't even know you, and want to invest or see what you're doing and everything like that. So that happens. But if you do what you're supposed to do and you treat the people right, within that that are willing to rock with you and everything like that, you never know. Like you say, people will show up. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's but the moment your name get get bad in the streets, your Ooh. name your your the, the moment you get to the point where people say, man. I ain't, hey. missing him. I ain't missing him. I ain't missing him hurt no yeah. more. <laughs> You're right, because even some of those people, I look at the people that, that like, okay, like, it's four of us here, and it's this one particular person, and we all got a story about, okay, this person, <laughs> and, you know, an outside thing. So it's not just what we've heard, but also have experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just me be my personal thing, you know, and I'm going to say it's an observation, not a judgment, right? Mm -hmm. Um, People I still see rocking with them hard. I'm kind of like, it makes make you it, look at that person. Yeah, look at look at that person a little bit differently. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it's like this ain't no mistake. You know, it's not just a, a misunderstanding between two people. Everybody got the same story. You know, and you still rocking with this person. It makes me kind of you know kind of look a, side of that as as comedians and as actors. A lot of times, the producers we work on the barter system. So that's kind of like what you're saying, Ben. You know, you may not get cash in hand, but there are other benefits. So they invite you to this party, and you meet 15, you know, mm -hmm. people there that can help you get to where you need to be. You know, we've all been there. One person leads to another person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I will say that that sometimes it's not about the money. It's you know things that are greater because um, there are services that I provide that most people can't afford. You know, I'm starting mm -hmm. at 1500 to write a script. I don't know how many of us got fifteen hundred in our pocket right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At the same time, you know, I may need y'all to act, and y'all charging twelve hundred. I don't have twelve hundred. Let's work together. You know that kind right. of thing because you know I know that y'all are business people. I know where y'all going. I know the work that y'all put in and what y'all do. And I don't have anything janky or you know like mm -mm -mm, but, you know. But but also because it still tie into what what you're saying and what we've been saying. Do not. And and this go this is strictly for the people who may be like listening in and and see. Don't even though I said that you can do this, you you can't assume. Right. You can't. You know what I mean? Like right, don't right. don't or 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 you cannot uh, expect. How can I, you can't assume, and then you also. Don't do that. That's not that's not good business to do certain things mm -hmm. with that mindset in the back where I got this person. Because as you can see with with Diddy and other these people, you're getting jammed up for for you know for being able to try to hold somebody hostage for certain mm -hmm. things or 
So, you know, that yeah. type of so do it in goodwill. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if you are a person that do good business and you are doing what you say, like like we say, people are more willing to you, I, even when it comes to me being a stand-up comedian, you say, Hey, I'm a uh I got this show, man. People call me, hey man, I'm doing this, da da da, da come through or whatever. I may not charge you what I can charge mm -hmm. or what I not what I can charge, what I charge, what I should charge for what I do and what I want to bring. <laughs> but that may be based on the relationship, the the business that you do, mm -hmm. how how you rock your presentation, all mm -hmm. that comes in, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you're a person who continues a, a a certain cycle of unprofessionalism and everything. All you're doing is continuing a what we was talking about. The topic of the show. Crabs in the bucket. On this back, yeah. on your it, it, that becomes it, a crab it, in the bucket it, barter system. You know, it it's it, it's funny because uh we touched on the subject of people, a particular person, uh, but there are many people out there who mm -hmm. don't practice that type of of professionalism and once you do work with people on a professional level it's hard to go back you don't want to go back i mean it might be tight not at all you know it's like okay <laughs> now i can understand i can understand you know once I mean, you, you, you try to give people the benefit of the doubt right uh, yeah at the same time the people you know there are people that you can Maybe you've been watching them for a while. You're like, you know what they do? They they actually do some pretty good work. I I would work with them, but then they don't really recognize the, the, the you know the time that it takes, the time that you're willing to give them, and what they want to pay you. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't add up, and so you just you know wait and hopefully you know we'll find something. We'll work down the line. But what does bother me <laughs> <laughs> with uh, you do want to work with people. Mm -hmm. But they want to take you hostage. They want to keep you for hours. They don't want to. It's like, lady, you want me to drive where? No, <laughs> no stipend for gas. You're not gonna feed me, and you're not sure if. It's like, no, let's just wait. But every time it's been like that. Thankfully, I've gone back and I've I've, I've followed up and I've watched whatever that was. I haven't been mad about it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people are still growing in their craft, and you, you allow that to happen. You still support from a distance, right. and you, you keep the buffer, you, you know. I mean, you do. You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. Want everybody to like. To, I see. To, I see. You keep. Yeah, you know. You know. Good job. Yeah. You know. Hey. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there there's a difference, and and you know the, the we're gonna you're going to come across paths with people who are shady. There are people who are gonna make promises. Oh my God! I can only pay you this much this time, but next time I'm a yeah. Oh, don't fall for it, oh, and, and please don't circle back if they get you the first time. Because guess what? Yes. It's gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if you're if you keep putting stuff, people. If you're if you're if you're if your joint is on too, but you got paid. Mm -hmm. So maybe Andrew, you can't afford. Hopefully, no. So I'm talking about the person who actually got it on to it. Oh, oh, yeah, they got, <laughs> they got paid, but they can only they they got a micro budget. But you you get you pumping out four or six movies a year, and it's still a micro budget. Where's the money going? You know, mm. okay. Yeah, we talking so, to you, huh? Mm. So yeah, we talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Mm. We talking you know, to who we talking to? That person. You know, it's, like, it's, like, right. it's like, and, and then on. and there's a way to dissolve the budget because on the film yeah. budget there's like eight eight hundred lines. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of times they do that. They you know oh well, we got to pay this and this and this. So I mean you know your residual check is two dollars and thirty three cents. That hurt. Start getting that. Burn some sage. What they say as long as I owe you. <laughs> you don't get it, but I get it. Oh man! So yeah, man. So as long as I owe you, you'll never be as broke as you think you are. Man, that's like that. What's that Popeye character? If I pay you a dollar, what did he, what did he used to say? Uh, 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 Whippy. Whippy. Yeah, Whippy. 
I can I can I can I can I can I forget what his line was, but he never had it. And for the hamburger, oh gosh. Oh man. You give it to me today, I can give you a dollar tomorrow. Yeah, and hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> man, so man, this has been a great conversation, man. We're gonna close the argument off well, this the the uh, not the argument, but the um close off this uh conversation soon. So um closing arguments, closing um closing uh subjects and everything. So um to to pretty much piggyback off what everybody was saying is that you know. Study your craft. Don't let no one hold you back. Stop um, holding others back. <laughs> and stop putting everything out there on social media, man. Go to the person, talk to them. And find your way to navigate the most professional way that you can to get to where you need to get to. And uh, don't let nobody peep Diddy. I don't know. That's another, another subject right there, man. But that dance room. That's the take that. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's, it's just a lot that goes into this industry, man, when we look at it. And it's just like, man, you got to protect yourself the best way you can. And it and ain't I, new. I do want to give a shout out yeah. to the comedians too, Ben. Like, I, I haven't been to one of your shows yet, but I've seen clips and everything. I've been so crazy busy, but I got to give a shout out to I comedians. mean, wait, man, we all on, man, boy. Man, the boys be out on movie sets and they doing commercials for here and there. I can understand, man. You can't come to a little comedy show. Man, I ain't got my car right now, bro. I, I, I ain't got my car. I'm going to get there. I'm going to make an Uber or some shit. I don't he gonna know. Try to, he going to try to say it's because of Uber. I just seen this man on hmm. TV. I'm about I'm gonna take a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, I saw you post that guy dog on the street. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I no yeah. one one thing that I always say, just piggyback and say is, yeah. I I always appreciate all my friends in yeah. industry that I meet because I always like I always give my industry people a pay and my people who got like families in real life what I get them passed too, but can't make stuff because. Yeah, my friends be busy, man. Not one my of my family. Work. You know what I'm saying? I may see my you. I may not see certain some of my friends that like I may not see you. The next yeah. time I may see you might be at, at an award show. But I'm seeing my guy that we. See, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. these are my friends. This is life. Yeah, and I yeah. love it. Yeah, man. Because yeah. we we all and that's another thing too. The people like we we all out here making it, the grind and everything getting there. And uh, oh, another thing too, it don't it don't cost much to post what some what somebody's doing. Like right. we we do it on the on just acting up show all the time. Like we'll just, out of nowhere we'll take some and just post the same. Uh, <laughs> my homegirl or my friend, the homeboy doing this, you know whatever. And everybody, man, I appreciate you, man. They came out of nowhere. Thank you for doing that, man. They just share. It. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna be there. Share it. Just share it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah, yeah. That's better than sometimes. That's I want to I want to give a shout out to one of my homeboys. Yeah, the comedian Shabazz Playtime. But on, yeah, only because uh, only the reason why I'm giving it to him now is because you said that yeah. that last statement that you just said, Josh. Because man, for years, mm -hmm. for years, I, I I used to be like, I look up and I'm like, I don't even. It's not that he just do it. He always been like if for years. Like when we was he he out there working, doing his thing, being commercials, movies, stand up and everything, like we've been rocking or whatever. But he always shared people's stuff. Yeah. Like if you go down his page, like of course he got a bunch of reels and a bunch of different his own stuff, or whatever. But he always would it be like, of course, other comedians, but a uh, poet, like everybody. Yeah. He always shares it. So I have to give a shout out to him because Shit, he'll make me he'll make me share something. You know when you be like, mm. damn, I'm finna share. It. Damn, I don't want people to think that I'm sharing it because he has shared it. But yeah, you know, like I look up and sometimes I don't be knowing about stuff going on until I see another friend share. Yeah, yeah. true that. That, yeah. that means a lot. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. really does for what we what we all do. It means a lot if you share stuff like that. Like I said, my um, I love my family and everything, but my. <laughs> My ex fiance, when you know we was together, her family came to see me in stage plays. Nobody in my immediate family came to see me in any stage plays. I ain't holding it against uh -huh. them. I knew they wish me, you know, from afar. But you keep going. 
Like me right. and Reddick talk all the time, and Nicole, we talk all the time, and like they were saying, like, man, you finna get on this Greyhound bus to go to where? You go to Memphis? Yeah, bro, we chasing it. Mm -hmm. Like steady chasing that dream. Like, and we gonna get there eventually. Like you said, we're gonna see each other at war show. Like, bro, me and we was on we was in the VIP yeah. room on, online and yeah. had in the VIP room. You actually have a uh, actually have a VIP room that we, we can do this right. stuff in. So, and hey, and that's that that the people get away from that crab to get away from that crab mentality bucket. Please think of the long term. Yeah. Not right now. Like I was just saying that in tongue in cheek, but it really be a real thing. Like where you see people at whether it be at awards or some type of event where it may be some type of something in celebration. It may be somebody's birthday, or maybe you never know when you're gonna see because people be working. You never know when y'all gonna run into each other. Or y'all may run into each other just on a Friday night of seeing it. But stop looking at the now mm -hmm. and think long term with everything. Because some people are seasons. The people that you're dealing with, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a relationship, uh, everything is a relationship. So whether it be a, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, it could be a best friend, it could be a, it could be a business relationship, it could be for the long term, it could be seasonal. Mm -hmm. But you can't not hold, like, you know, do good business, do right, Try to keep a clear conscience, clean con clean closet closet. And you do the right things because you move on, you say, hey man, we sever ties. All right, well, like you see people on podcasts, they get on and then they they be on the podcast. It's so successful, they build it up, and then they break up three, four years later, five years later, and it just be like, it ain't have to be like that unless you're doing bad shit. You know what I mean? And you you move on. We see each other when we see each other. Like, cause it's not about now. We all we all got expiration date. Like I said earlier, mm -hmm. it's about hey man, when I see you in passing, was it good? When I see you in passing, can I can I can I can can I talk about you? Know, who want to see somebody and, and want to pinch their fist every time they see them? You know what I mean. So that's a crab in the bucket mentality. Mm -hmm. If you're only thinking about right now, if you can only see, if you think like, hey man, I gotta deal with, hey man, you, people can all, you can all grow people, but people think that they the only people that can outgrow people. Mm -hmm. You can be outgrown as well. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you gotta take that. You gotta take that for what it is. Mm -hmm. And just like you can support a person, you you a person can take off with your with Joffrey been doing this thing on the on the on the movies and the and, and commercials and different things like that and you look at it and say oh I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be with no you support any other people these other people that you don't know on movies and, and commercials and everything yeah. like that don't take it personal I, I I was a season I was a part of that uh, you build whatever you can. From what from your experience from dealing with this person and take it and do what you can do it. Don't sit around and be moping around and then that's what you have. You have people that turn around and see you see a person at the top. And I'm I only talk about the innocent folks who say, Oh, I'm gonna I may lie to knock Jay down because I'm mad that I'm not that I'm where I am right now. You know what I mean? So I just had to say that why you because you had you made that point, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it, it felt on cue. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Respect, respect, man. Uh Nicole, you got any uh closing arguments before what we uh got uh, here? Well, something that I always say because I'm a true believer in it is that we are all co-creators of our own reality. So whatever your mindset is, you know, whatever you your perception or whatever you believe, that is your reality and that's what it's going to be. There are people in this world who actually create narratives in their head and create stories that don't exist, you know, yeah. kind of thing. So the number one thing I would say <clears throat> is mind your business. And that's what I mean. Mind, <laughs> mind your business. What are you doing? Before you start pointing fingers about what somebody else is doing, what are you doing? Yeah. Where are your transparencies? What do you have lined up? Just work on you. 
have faith. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, a lot of things that I that I have accomplished, and I'll tell people the secret to it, is just me isolating myself, being focused on what that idea is and visualizing it and just totally erasing any and all doubt. There have been times I've done something that's like, I need five thousand dollars. Where am I gonna get that from? You know, and it's just like, hey, just start working it. Act like you already got the money. Act like you already have, you know, just start working on the production and stuff. And before you know it, things you start getting phone calls and things just yeah. start happening. I'm telling you, it really, really happens. But it's all about your mindset, and you truly can have anything that you want, and that's the power. Anything you can dream of and think of, you can have. Now the thing is, what are you gonna do with that power? Mm. Because some people, when they're powerful, they use themselves come in a powerful position. So now that I'm here, I need to do this, this, and this. Like they play in chess and strategize and everything. And there are other people that have power in life. Oh my God, what I'm going to do this? And they self-sabotage. Yeah. And they be on some bullshit. So sometimes people have power and don't know what to do with it. So, you know, the thing about it is if you're someplace you've never been, okay? If you're an actor and you've never directed and you want to direct, just do it. You know, do a skit, do a something, just do it, but don't self-sabotage yourself and just well, you know, I ain't no director anyway, and this person didn't do this in my job. You know, don't don't just just take it as a LE learning experience and you and you grow from that. So again, my thing is we are all co-creators of our own reality. So what is your self-talk and mind your business? Love it, love it, love it, man. Man, ready, you got anything? Love, love that. You know what? Thing. What I want to do is just highlight everybody who's on here. Uh, all of you guys are phenomenal. You're 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 great. I respect all of you, and I wish you all, you know, all the success, and just keep doing what you're doing. Oh, likewise, 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 man. likewise. Thank you. appreciate it. And then that's me with the uh, with the closing. Um, Reddy, appreciate you, Ben. Appreciate you, Nicole. Thank you. Appreciate all three of y'all. So much talent no. on this panel, man. And um, to piggyback off of what everybody was saying is, man, keep going, keep going, keep going. This is like my sixth year professionally, but I always wanted to do this acting and everything. Have my own show, have my own TV show. So many things, and it all started with me getting on stage at, at a poetry night, being trash. <laughs> something that I love doing, being trash, coming back, working on my craft, coming back the next the next following weekend or so, studying it, getting right and getting sharp, like Ben said, and keep going. Like Nicole said, uh, iron sharpens iron, and you keep on going at it. And you can't go in there and say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. And it's funny that Nicole mentioned something about your mindset, about your mindset and the positivity earlier, just a few minutes ago, because Reddick said something about that earlier to me about your mindset, being positive. You keep working, you keep sharpening your craft, you find others who have the answers and pray and hope that these people aren't those self-sabotaging, all those crappy bucket mentality, but you keep going because it's all going to be an obstacle in front of you. But mm -hmm. if you stop doing what you are trying or destined to do or that you want to do, you holding yourself back. And that's the crab and you being a crab yourself. So told you it's going to be a master class. <laughs> and you didn't even know, man. So what about uh, profit? Profit? Hey, man, the oh, oh, profit's man. in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if it's profit right, in the so. bucket, it ain't gonna be in the bucket too long and thick. You're right. Especially with the corn potatoes. Oh, 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 one thing I do want to say though, What's I know we just talked about crabbing the buckets and 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 we just talked about being positive and being uh and working and in your craft and and, and everything like that. Mm. And but we also want to leave y'all with be realistic as mm. well if you are trash <laughs> in what you are doing and you have put in an extra ex, ex, and well, I don't even know the word to you then they and ex, an ex, something very it when it comes to you said something very work, what extraminal there it is extraminal yeah. If you put in extra nominal work and hours, you've already reached 10,000 hours mm -hmm. in a certain craft. Maybe a janitor or a trash man is not so far out of your realm. Like, we always going to need everything in life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not saying, I, I know it may sound funny or rude or whatever like that, but um, 
you can have it in, an experience and then you sometimes it, it's just that get out the way find out what you good at sometimes it's, it's people that are out there that are stinking it up on stage that could be doing production or could be doing mm -hmm. who whatever you might be trying to act and you might haven't even tapped in to you got a story or a few stories to write and tell mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying uh, be realistic within your dream. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, to be honest with you, you standing in your way and, and others, possibly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Facts on top of facts, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all, man. That's going to do it for Jaws VIP room. And I'll see y'all next time. Don't forget to like, share, comment, like, subscribe. This is the VIP room. I like this. Hey man, I'm telling you, bro, I'm, bro, I'm telling you, when I get me, when I get, what's my uncle used to say? Once I get two good pennies to rub together, and I can afford my little, it. My little, my little, ain't my little cup ain't never, ain't never went empty up in the little VIP room. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be a crab. Where is my <laughs> girl? I did not see that one bottle girl. I'm upset. This, this is, this, it's over. I, well, once, once I get some good money, get some get the real VIP room, I make sure I send out some flyers to the right people. <laughs> we, don't, we don't send it to the right people that they ain't about that be on that BS all the time. Like we gonna be in the VIP room, yes. Just don't come in there with that BS. We're gonna kick your ass out. We're gonna be sitting around every time. We're gonna hey man, what happened to the, what happened to the stuff, man? They ain't got to the right people yet. We gonna be waiting <laughs> for the right people. <laughs> Y'all know we some fools, man. Y'all be safe, be good out there. See you next time. All right, peace and love. Peace.